Today we're turning this golf cart into a drivable generator. And we're gonna do it by throwing this monster battery and this inverter into the cart. I can already hear the comments. That's not a generator, this is a generator. And you'd be right, but just hang with me and we'll go through why you might wanna have both. After the install, we're gonna range test this thing. Imagine having a power outage and you could drive your generator to your neighbor's house and plug in their refrigerator. Now this cart was super cheap. It was on Marketplace. It was way out in the middle of nowhere in West Virginia. It was one of those come now if you wanna buy it kind of deals. Originally I bought it so I could flip it. I was gonna just fix it, throw a battery in it and sell it. The cart's worth about four grand in working condition in my area. So this lithium battery outputs 51.2 volts. It's 105 amp hours and a whopping 5.37 kilowatt hours. That is a massive amount of power. Let me show you all the cool stuff it came with. Charger, the display screen, and your AC plug. Now you may or may not like this. This is your EV style plug. Um, honestly, I wish this was just your standard old extension plug extension cord plug, but it works. This display screen is cool, but honestly, there's nothing on it that you're gonna see that's not also in the app, so you don't even need to mount this. I'm not using it. This charge indicator is the same way. It's awful cool, but you don't have to use it. This is the comm cable that goes from the charger to the battery. On the side, you have your positive, negative, on-off switch, comm port, and screen port. I've found that when I have this comm cable plugged into this charge port that fan never turns off and the charge indicator light always shows red so i leave that off too masasaur masasaur i did time in public school i'm never gonna say it right moss moss battery it's a new brand they're on amazon and they're about 1500 bucks before i catch any flack on how much it cost the replacements for just the Trojan lead acids on Amazon run about $1,300, and those don't include any of the extras like the charger, the Bluetooth app on your phone, nothing. Not to mention all the extra benefits of having lipo batteries over lead acid batteries. Hurricane Helene was 16 days ago from the day I'm filming this video, and there are so many people who are not even close to getting their power back. You cannot run your house on a generator for 16 days. Do you know how much fuel that would take? In a place where there's no fuel and no electricity, what do you do? How do you operate on a meager ration of fuel that you might be able to get? My neighbor just now got that generator started. He's been trying for three days. We literally just got an entire grass-fed cow and it's in two freezers in our basement. How would we keep that cold for two weeks or three weeks or a month? What if you had critical medical devices that had to run all night when you were sleeping like a CPAP machine? What if your house is like mine and you've got a sump pump and if that's not on during a rainstorm, then my basement will flood. So if you have a golf cart, you have power stored that you could be deploying for your needs. So this inverter is actually pretty cool. It's a pure sine wave. It'll run your electronics without damaging them. And it has an eco mode. It means if there's no load on the machine, it turns itself off. And it's not consuming nearly as much power as a standard inverter would use at idle. So this would be great for a sump pump. It's only going to run when the pump is trying to run. It'd be great for your freezer because it's, or your refrigerator because it's only going to turn on when that compressor kicks on. And at 3.7 kilowatts, it's three to four times more power than your standard like Jackery or your entry-level EcoFlow, all these battery generators that are super awesome and I wish I had one, but this has got a lot more power. Now your Jackeries and your EcoFlows are a lot more portable, but I think we can make this one so you can at least take it out and use it in the house if you need to. On the flip side, you can't drive your battery generator, but you can drive this one. So if you had a big storm blow through and you had a lot of trees down, this might be a great option to get you around. Now for the plan, battery here, inverter here charger somewhere else. And I made this to put the inverter on. Golf cart lives outside, but this hay in here has been here since I bought it and it is still very, very dry. I bought this heavy duty Anderson extension cable and what I'm gonna do is cut it right there and put lugs on it. Half of it is gonna go to the inverter and the other half is gonna go to the battery. Now it's gonna give me options. Let's say I wanted to wash the golf cart for some reason. I could take the inverter out of it. Now the battery is waterproof. It's also gonna give me the options to take it in the house if I need to. Uh, let's say I wanted to run my sump pump and I could just take the battery and the inverter out and take it into my house and plug it in. Be good to go. This AC charger, which could run on your generator, should charge this battery 
from 0% to 80% in about two hours. That's way better than the charge time on your lead acid batteries. This is really a two person job. This thing is a little heavy. Be careful you run to a switch and you don't smash it. It does say it's 49 kilograms. I don't know what that is in American. Yeah, there we go. Like a glove. It's not going anywhere. It's a tight fit, but she's in. So you can see there's just enough room to operate the run toe switch. I'm thinking we angle it so that we have enough room to get a plug in and out. I think we can get this in there. So let's find some screws and make that happen. Oh yeah. Oh, I like this. Let's pretend this was an extension cord. Can I get it? Put it in. No, I cannot. All right, let's cut some of this out. Look at that. There we go. Check it out, guys. We have got space for days in here. I had to cut this out back here. Plenty of room for that charger right in the middle. We've got a hole cut out in the back. I think we're gonna use that to run the AC charge cable to the back. So that's good. One less thing we have to worry about. Inverter fits in there really nice. It just pulls right out. We got enough space up here. We can uh, attach the Bluetooth cable. Let's grab the charger, see how it fits. Oh yeah, guys, look at this. We've got the charger in here. We got a lot of room on both sides. Now the question I have is do we do we hard mount the charger? We could take the battery and the inverter out. But do we hard mount the charger? And I don't I don't know what to say. What do you think? She's on there. We're gonna throw this cable on. I think this is gonna be it for me for this evening. Pretty simple setup right here. So we're in the run position. We'll turn the switch on. I hear the battery click on. Yeah, I'm not actually going anywhere. All right, guys, we're back. I've been busy. Uh, I think today every neighbor I have has decided to cut grass, hire a tree company, run a stump grinder, and there's been a million planes flying overhead. So I've been busy working and not filming because it's been so loud. I did some good things. I did some dumb things. I did some things that you might not have to do. Let's show you all of it. Now, remember, we have two objectives on this cart. Number one, we want to be able to drive it somewhere and plug it in and power something. Number two, we want to be able to take the battery and the inverter out of the cart and say, put it in my house where the cart won't fit. Keep those two objectives in your mind. Here's our test fits. We have the battery, we have the charger, and then the inverter. That's number one. I did decide to delete this connector. Now, do I think you need to do it? I don't. I deleted this not because it was bad, but because I'm dumb. In a power outage or an emergency or something weird is going on, it would be really easy to lose half of this cable. Let me show you what I installed instead. I went back to an old favorite, the NOCO GCP1. It goes from this weatherproof enclosure just to this standard plug. And if we do have a power outage, I'm not gonna forget the cord because this just uses a standard extension cord. This inverter is equipped with a little pigtail. It's about this long. It goes into a green connector and that's so you can turn the inverter off and on remotely. So I installed this guy. Inverter off, inverter on. Oh, you wanna see something dumb? I thought I was being smart. I installed this USB outlet. I thought I bought the 48 volt version. Nope. Fried it. It's dead. I'm gonna have to buy a different higher voltage one. And the important thing, look, I finished our Anderson cable. We put two lugs over here, one there, one there, and we ran the ends into the uh, into the inverter. Now this is that remote wire. It's ugly, but it's what I had laying around, so it's free. We are plugged in. That didn't work. Stink. Apparently I did not crimp this nearly enough. Yeah. Yeah. That seemed a little better. That was embarrassing. Like Casey Liddell says, I never said I was good at this. Just telling you how I'm doing it. We've got our battery on. We've got our drill plugged in. Our uh, switch on the inverter is on. And the remote switch is on. Let's see how it does. <laughs> All right. 
Hey, that's actually eco mode. That's pretty fast. So eco mode should have up to a two second delay. So right there, two. That was eco mode. The way eco mode works is it doesn't actually turn the inverter on until it senses a load and it saves your battery. It would probably be pretty annoying if you were running tools like this, but I think if you were running a fridge, it'd be pretty awesome. Very cool stuff. Now let's see the process to actually take this out. We're unplugged, the remote switch is off, the remote switch. And then this whole thing comes right out. And I can put the jumper right back in so that it actually turns on. And with two bolts on the battery, the battery comes right out. I could take this whole unit right in my house. Let's get the Bluetooth module for the inverter installed. Specifically, this is for anything with the VE direct port, like this guy right here. This is what you're gonna have to use to control your inverter. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape. We're gonna put it right there. Click our device. And I believe it's six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. The Bluetooth interface can be used to update the firmware on the inverter. So give that a try too. Very cool stuff. You can turn the inverter off and on, set the mode, battery alarm. All the things that you can do on that inverter are all unlocked with that Bluetooth dongle. First off, how far can I actually drive this thing? I think we need to do our 10 mile range test and estimate how far this thing would actually drive on a full battery. I need to know how long it will last on a critical load. Let's say my freezer. Good morning. It is range test day. We're at 100% battery. So if you haven't done a range test on a golf cart with me before, what I like to do is 10 miles in my neighborhood. I start and finish at the same spot. It's roughly a half mile per loop. I do 10 miles at 100% throttle and I measure the distance with the GPS on my phone to make sure that we do an accurate 10 miles. Now it should be noted that this is not how you use a golf cart. Typically you're gonna be in a start, stop, go less than full throttle situation and definitely not for 10 miles. We're zeroed out and we're going to go full speed. Oh my goodness, this thing is making a bunch of noise. Morning. I think this is a leftover from a golf course. So it's a corporate car. It's definitely going slower than my easy go. Yeah, 18 more laps to go. And my neighbors are all waving. They think I look ridiculous. So we are at two and a half miles and 96%. We just hit five miles, 91%. Man, we're cooking this thing. Onward. Oh, there we go. 10 miles, 82%. Took 18% of the battery to go 10 miles. That's 1.8% per mile or 55 miles on 100%. That's pretty good. So this is not bad, this is just worth noting. At 82%, this charger will not kick on. I have to use this comm cable. So I think the next test we need to do is something you'd actually do in an emergency. The inverter's on, it's not set to eco mode, it's plugged into the freezer. The freezer is full of expensive meat, I really don't want to lose it, so we're going to keep an eye on the time with the kilowatt and then we can see how much battery we've used. We are starting from 100%. Check this out, we have been running for an hour and 35 minutes and we're at 99% battery. Hey guys, check this out, we are 6 hours and 30 minutes into this experiment. Check it out. Six hours and 31 minutes now. We are still at 99%. So six and a half hours and we've used 1% of that battery. This is pretty amazing. Now granted, this is a freezer and it's already full, so it's not turning off and on maybe as much as say your refrigerator would. But what a great, at least proof of concept. What if I took that roof and I put a whole solar panel on that roof, like 300 watts, how much longer would this battery last? What if we put the, the Starlink Mini on here and we had a mobile hotspot? I think there's good things to come with this cart. Maybe a few more tweaks and updates. Maybe I should test some new batteries. What do you think? Would you run this setup? Let me know in the comments.